And, and Michael, let me start with you. Taylor Swift just finished three shows in your city. In terms of economic impact, uh, put it in perspective for us compared to, to other big ticket events you've had, like the Super Bowl. Well, if, if you look at the total economic impact and add up the ticket sales, plus the hotels, drinks, all the other ancillary spend, you get very close to half a billion dollars, which makes it, uh, in terms of direct immediate economic impact, possibly bigger even than the Super Bowl. So it's something pretty extraordinary in terms of what the city and the state are feeling on an immediate basis. Andrew, I'm going to come to you next, but, but first I want to listen to an official from Toronto and uh, what he had to say about economic impact. On the economic impact, three key points I'd like you to take away. One, this is a lot of visitors at half a million. Two, they're each projected to spend a lot of money. Our, the evidence coming out of other cities that uh, the per capita spending for concert goers is above $1,300. To put that into context, um, the per capita spend for delegates to our major former tech industry event collision was 1228 So Swifties spend a lot and they're coming from outside. So it's new money into uh, our economy. So Andrew, your organization, Destination Toronto, uh, did an interesting thing. So he excluded ticket prices because not uh, much of that money stays in the city. So that aside, your estimate is that these concerts are going to create $282 million in economic benefit. That's an estimate. Does it look like you're going to probably hit that? Well, it shows you overall just, you know, the power of these kinds of major events in terms of driving, driving people into the, driving money into the economy. And you heard uh, Pat Tobin there from the city just talking about that a moment ago, talking about it, it drives net new spending, hundreds of thousands of visitors that spend money on hotels and restaurants and, and those other things that, that Michael was talking about as well. But that's new money into our economy. So it, it didn't start the day in our economy, but it ends the day there. And then even after the visitor's gone home, that money continues to work. So money you spend at a restaurant, the restaurant then turns around and spends that money on labor, on ingredients, on other services. So you go from about $150 million in direct spending to over $280 million in terms of the overall impact and what it brings into the economy. Everyone who's going to be coming to the concert will have a, their own story. And here's one. Sarah Fournier is going to uh, travel here with three others for the weekend from Montreal. So I guess now the money I have to kind of gather up is for like the merch and just like the expenses for the weekend, which I have um, in a saving account. So it should be all good. But yeah, it comes from like summer jobs and just saving throughout the years. So gas, the ticket prices, which is not the cheapest either, but um, I would say probably like 500, 600 per person for the weekend. Yeah, and keep in mind, in her case, she's staying with family, friends, so she's not paying for accommodations. A lot of people obviously are. Um, Michael, based on your experiences in New Orleans with the Taylor Swift concerts, um, any lessons or advice for, for Toronto and, for that matter, for Vancouver that's going to have some Swift concerts as well? Well, I think that what really struck me about this is what a complete takeover it was. Uh, Taylor Swift was was ubiquitous. There was Taylor Swift coming out of restaurants, out of cars, out of people walking down the streets with mobile speakers. Um, it was it wasn't a, a concert. It wasn't a show. It was um, an experience uh, that, that I, I the only thing I could compare it to is back in 2010 when the Saints uh, won the Super Bowl. This kind of uniform. Uh, joy and energy throughout the city. So I would say to everybody in Toronto, and I love Toronto. I used to live in Toronto. I actually worked out in Mississauga for a little bit, long story, but <laughs> everybody should participate. Um, individuals should dress up. Restaurants should have promotions. Stores should have special events because this is not just like having a superstar show. This is a chance for a city to have a collective moment of joy and catharsis. And, and Andrew, picking up on that point, uh, Toronto does have some events already set up. For example, I think a, a scavenger hunt. I've never heard of that before when a concert comes to town. Well, like Michael said, it's about capturing that, that sense of fandom, right? That sense of passion. People are here, they want to experience. Yes, they, they'll either have tickets for the show or many of them don't, frankly, that, that even come into the city. But how do we get them to go do more, see more, uh, spend more in the city. So, yeah, so we, you know, we've created a, a 
a Taylor's version of Toronto, a scavenger hunt, essentially, that just encourages playing off her lyrics and her songs, try to get people around the city, try to get people moving around again, doing more so that more business, more businesses, more neighborhoods, more people throughout the city benefit from all of this momentum, all this activity, which is, is so critical to capture when they're here. Yeah, pretty happy event, right? In these polarized times, uh, I feel like in Toronto, it's going to bring people together. Though, Michael, I may not take your advice in terms of dressing up like Taylor Swift. But anyway, Michael Hecht, Andrew Weir, thank you very much for uh, speaking with us. Thanks. Thank you. It's been great. Never in my wildest dreams to coin a phrase that I think I'd be talking to Canada about Taylor Swift. It wasn't on my bingo card, but I'm glad it is. Have a great time. You'll love it. Excellent.